guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing Kylie Skin sunscreens, the Broad Spectrum SPF 40 sunscreen and the Broad Spectrum SPF 30 sunscreen oil. This video is not sponsored, uh, and I bought these myself from Kylie Skin. I've been using these for several weeks now, and if you're new here, welcome. I live in Houston, and it's August. Translation, hot and humid. So I've been wearing these in extreme conditions. This is a chemical sunscreen. It has no cast to it. Before I even clicked on the purchase button, I knew what the first ingredient was without even looking at the ingredient list. Do I have ESP? No. I knew that just by looking at the blob on the model's finger. The first ingredient in this product is isodotecane, and that I love in my sunscreens. It's a synthetic hydrocarbon that is actually a solvent, so it kind of helps with the ingredients going into the product and dissolving and whatnot, but it's also an emollient, and it creates a very nice lightweight finish, and it also helps the product spread on the skin, and that's exactly what you get with this. It spreads on very easily, very smooth, and it has a super lightweight feel to it. It's not heavy, it's not greasy, really lightweight, really comfortable to wear. Isodotecane is also great in that it prevents evaporation of water out of the skin, so it keeps your skin hydrated. As you can tell, this is a clear and colorless product. You forget you even have it on your face, and as you go throughout the day, it doesn't pill, it doesn't ball, it doesn't do weird things, it doesn't do anything. You completely forget that you're wearing it. It absorbs really quickly, lightweight finish, and it's not greasy or tacky or sticky. If you're wearing your hair down and your hair's blowing around, it doesn't stick to your face because the sunscreen's sticky. You know what I'm talking about, none of that. This product is also nice in that it is free of fragrance, which I appreciate. That was one of my major criticisms when I reviewed the brand when the skincare products first launched a year ago was fragrance. A lot of people are already sensitive to fragrance and cannot use products that have fragrance in them. And even if you don't have a problem with fragrance, it can lead to contact dermatitis down the road and it can also cause just irritation and a lot of problems. So I really appreciate that they did not put fragrance in the sunscreen. This is a product that's actually more inclusive than a lot of competitors on the market. It's free of fragrance, so people who are allergic to fragrance can use it. It doesn't have a white cast to it whatsoever and it's not greasy, so people with oily skin who just don't feel comfortable wearing heavy products on their face are gonna enjoy it. It doesn't pill or ball, so if you're a makeup wearer, you can put makeup on over it and it's not gonna create any issue. And it also is really good if you have dry skin because that isodotecane helps hold water in the skin and reduces transepidermal water loss. As far as the actual sunscreen and sun protection in this, it's not unique, it's not novel, it's not the best thing on the market. It's a chemical sunscreen. It has avabenzone, which will protect you from the rays that penetrate really deeply into the skin and cause wrinkles, lead to a lot of issues with hyperpigmentation and deeper skin tones. Avabenzone is the only chemical ingredient in American sunscreens that does that, that, that protects against those UVA rays. Unfortunately, it's not super stable, it degrades. That's a limitation of all American chemical sunscreens and this is no exception. I always recommend people consider instead using a mineral sunscreen uh, with zinc and titanium dioxide or zinc alone. Unfortunately, these do often have a cast. There are better formulations that use microfine zinc, smaller particles, so you get less and less of a cast. But for deeper skin tones, that often is a limitation. But you can find some tinted mineral sunscreens that, that end up blending into the skin really nicely for deeper skin tones. So I really think the skincare market overall should push itself to come out with more tinted mineral sunscreens that offer deeper shade ranges for darker skin types. Beyond the issue with avabenzone not being the most stable ingredient to protect us from UVA, the other issue with chemical sunscreens for a lot of people is that they can burn or sting, particularly around the eyes. The chemical ingredient that most often does that is um, oxybenzone, which this 
product does not have. For me personally, this product caused no burning or stinging. I was able to put it all around my eyes with no issue, wear it comfortably out in the humidity without it melting into my eyes and causing red watery eyes. I didn't have any issue with it in that regard, but do be aware of the fact that because this is a chemical sunscreen, if you're super sensitive, you might find that there is some burning and stinging with it. I already raved about that isododecane ingredient, which I think makes for a really nice vehicle for sunscreens because of the spread of the lightweight feel and the other ingredients in this include shea butter which I've got a video on it's a wonderful moisturizing ingredient and this also has laminaria extract as uh, marine extract that um, is a wonderful humectant can hold a lot of water in the skin and then the last ingredient I believe is kiwi seed oil um, seed oils they are rich in fatty acids that can be helpful for the skin do you know that some people find certain plant oils to be irritating especially if you're acne prone sometimes those can cause issue whether or not a product's going to break you out don't believe that any set of ingredients or list of ingredients or any person is ever going to be able to predict that sometimes you just have to try it and go through that um, but overall i would say this is pretty low risk I have to be honest with you guys, I actually really like the sunscreen and I think it's a great choice. How does it compare to some of the competitors on the market? Well, I mentioned that it has isododecane. What other sunscreens on the market have that ingredient in them? Polish Choice Smoothing Primer Serum SPF 30. Very, very similar. I mean, if you put a blindfold on, and put this on one side of the face and Polish Choice on the other, you wouldn't know the difference and they look the same. Polish Choice Smoothing Primer Serum, again, identical in terms of feel and look. It's SPF 30, whereas this is SPF 40, and it clocks in at $30 for one ounce, whereas the Kylie Skin SPF 40 is $28 for 1.7 ounces. The second product is Murad's Invisibler Perfecting Shield SPF 30. Again, 30 as opposed to 40. One ounce of Murad, $65. Then the third product is Fresiderm Velvet Skin. Now this is the golden child of these isododecane vehicles, in my opinion. SPF 50, water resistant, whereas this is not and it clocks in at $26.50. And for those of you guys who don't live in the States, you have Frezzy Derm in like Greece, I know, and throughout Europe, I believe, as well. And in those countries, you have better chemical filters, so you're gonna get basically a better sunscreen. But you still have a vehicle that does that lightweight uh, finish, spreads really easily, has a, has a nice velvety smooth texture to it as it's going on, and then boom, it's like you're not wearing anything. But looking at the price of the Kylie Skin SPF 40 sunscreen at $28 for 1.7 ounces, you know, that's, that's not unreasonable when you're looking at the others that are a similar vehicle on the market. So I actually, like I said, I think that this is a pretty good product and I would recommend it to you guys. You can buy it obviously on the website or you can get it at Ulta as well. Same price, $28. Now I purchased the bundle of the SPF 40 and then the spray, which I'm gonna talk about next. And the bundle is $60 for both products. Moving on to the Broad Spectrum SPF 30 sunscreen oil. This is a spray sunscreen. It's a chemical sunscreen, so the same limitations that I mentioned earlier about the SPF 40 are going to apply to this with the Ava Benzone not being stable for your UVA protection. Um, but like the other product, there is no cast with this whatsoever. I can attest to that. I've worn it myself multiple, multiple times. This product, however, unlike the other one, comes with more risks, and I'll get into those. First of all, everybody will jump to the fact that there is alcohol denaturant in this. That doesn't worry me. I have a video explaining the role of alcohol denaturant in skincare products. It can be drying, unfortunately, but it is a helpful ingredient for creating kind of a lightweight feel to things, and it helps sunscreen ingredients be dissolved into the product and and stable. It has a role is what I'm getting at. However, this product has a ton of oils. So it's actually pretty moisturizing overall, or at least pretty emollient. It gives your skin this kind of glowy, luminous look to it. 
I was expecting this to be really greasy, but it's actually not. However, it does keep your skin looking really, really shiny. This is the type of thing that people like to use right before maybe they're gonna have their photo taken and they wanna kinda of create this glowy, dewy look. Um, that's what you're gonna get with this. It does make your skin look really shiny, but it's not greasy, if that makes sense. Why does it make your skin look so glowy, shiny? Because it has a ton of oils in it. Oils are emollients. They smooth down the surface of skin cells. The oils in this include coconut oil, kiwi seed oil, sunflower seed oil, and I think there are a few other oils as well. Plant oils like coconut oil, sunflower seed oil, they're you know, they have a role in skincare, but they tend to come with a greater risk because they are not pure substances. A lot of people find that they develop irritation to plant oils. And many people find that plant oils and oily cosmetics flare their acne. So if that's you, this is definitely a risky product. And overall, when it comes to skincare ingredients, it's really hard to say, that certain ingredients are, yes, problematic, avoid this if you have acne. However, I will say that in my personal clinical experience, coconut oil, at least for the patients that I've seen, coconut oil is one that comes up time and time again as causing flares of acne for people. Many consumers have a good idea at baseline if they have problems with coconut oil because this is not the first product out there to put coconut to have coconut oil. So if you know that it's problematic for you, it triggers your acne, stay away from it. The other group of people that this product is definitely going to be problematic for are people who suffer from a skin condition that often flares in the summer when you're sweaty and it's humid, and that is tinea versicolor. This is due to a little yeast that lives on the skin and your body can mount an immune response to it. It can cause issues and result in this rash that starts out with patches of discoloration that later heal with white spots. It's really a nuisance, hard to get rid of. Oily body care products, body oils, are one of the first things we tell you to get rid of if you deal with that. So don't use this if you have tinea versicolor. Also, if you have uh, fungal acne, you're not gonna wanna use this either. Uh, fungal acne also is re related to, to that little yeast. But personally, I don't have either of those conditions and I, you know, I had no issue wearing this, but it does kind of feel like you're walking around with baby oil on your skin. This product also has fragrance in it. So again, that's more likely to cause issue for people. Um, and a lot of people are sensitive to it. And just because you're not sensitive to it doesn't mean that you might not develop a sensitivity to it later on down the road. And the presence of fragrance in skincare products makes it more likely that you might mount an allergy to other ingredients in the product because it is co-sensitizing. The other reason why fragrance is going to be a problem in this is that you have it in there in combination with all of these plant oils. You go out in the sun with a product like this and those ingredients, the compounds in the oils and the fragrance, they oxidize, they degrade, and they become more irritating and they are all in there together. It just increases the risk of problems in a product like this. So I don't think it's good for those reasons. The other issue with a product like this, as with any sunscreen spray, is application. Um, we actually don't have really good or really any data um, on the efficacy of sprays for preventing photo damage. Um, you know, most of what we have is going to be creams. There is a risk with sprays of skip areas and as I've cautioned you guys in other videos, don't spray sunscreen sprays on while you're out and it's like windy. You end up spraying a lot of the sunscreen out in the air and not on your skin. It leads to patchy on even application. The way to use a product like this though, ideally is to spray the product in your hand and rub it in onto the skin. Or if you wanna spray it onto the skin itself, do multiple passes and then rub it in. But because people may skip those extra steps with a product like this, you're more likely to have skip areas that you could then develop you know, sunburn or sun damage from inadequate protection. This product is definitely problematic for multiple reasons, but it's one that I think a lot of consumers 
who, especially people who, you know, aren't really into learning about skincare ingredients, I think a lot of consumers are actually going to like this because it looks nice on the skin, it's easy to apply, or it seems easy to apply, and it smells good. It has fragrance in it, which I don't recommend, but the fragrance is nice. It smells like coconut. And so a lot of people are going to like this. Coconut scented sunscreens are popular, you know, Hawaiian Tropic. So it, it doesn't surprise me that coconut was the selected fragrance for this. And it is a nice light coconut scent. And the fragrance does last. It doesn't, it's not something that you just spray on and then it fades. It, you, you continue to smell like coconut while you're wearing this. So if you don't like that, that would be another reason to not use this uh, if you don't want to smell like a coconut all day. In summary, I would say skip the spray. Um, I don't think it's a good product. I don't recommend it. Um, I will use it up. You know, I don't have any problem using this personally, aside from, you know, I'd prefer to not have the fragrance, but if it's gonna be a fragrance, I actually like the smell of coconut. So I'm gonna use this up, but I don't recommend it for the reasons um, I elaborated. However, I think that you should definitely consider the SPF 40 sunscreen. This is actually, you know, I actually really like this. Is it the best sunscreen I've ever used? No, but come on, let's face it. I have used so many out there like whatever they're the better sunscreens would maybe have a higher spf be water resistant um you know that's kind of how you could get better than this tinted mineral deeper you know more shade ranges i will list that down below for you guys as well as the other sunscreens with iso dodecane in them the frezzy derm the polish choice the murad um if you if you have ever used any of those sunscreens though uh, and you like them, specifically the Polish Choice or the Murad one, because they're more expensive than this. Consider this one. If you like that, if you're like me and you like that isododecane vehicle, go for this. Give it a try. It's not a bad product. And I, like I said, I really enjoyed using it. Um, I saved the box for you guys. Uh, yes, there is bubble wrap that's included. Um, and these are just the boxes. And you also get stickers, which are basically advertisements for her other products that I don't recommend. Although the shoes are kind of cute. Um, these are helpful. Shower shoes, you guys, who, well, I mean, I don't really know that people are actually going back to college and showering in dorms, but anyways, yeah, shower shoes in the gym. I don't know, you know, that you need the Kylie ones, just regular crocs or whatever but yeah shower shoes do i do recommend those but not you you know how i feel about wipes what am i going to do with a sticker of wipes <laughs> um yeah so you get stickers you get a sticker of kylie here with eye cream on okay great um so yeah that's my review of kylie skin i actually have really liked the um the spf the spf 40 and i think it's a good product i don't really have anything negative to say about it um, hopefully they'll come out with a tinted mineral sunscreen in the future that is free of fragrance. But comment below and if you guys have used these products, what your experience with them was or is, I would love to know. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.